something called Appenite. Uh, we have a new service that we are developing for our customers called Ad Sciences. So I'm just going to show a hands in the room who who in the room has tried Facebook advertising before. And I don't mean um, boosting a post. I'm talking about actually running an ad campaign. Okay, so we've got a few people who have done it, and how many people are considering running some Facebook ads for your startup or your, your company, et cetera? Other show of hands? So we've got a few people. All right, so we have some knowledge of what Facebook advertising is, but basically Facebook, Facebook's whole business model is tracking everything that you do on Facebook and everything that you tell Facebook. And that means that it's very easy to highly target ads. So a lot of our customers say, wait, we don't want to do business on Facebook, and that's not what we're suggesting with Facebook advertising. It's actually a great way to target your exact customers. Chances are, with uh, almost 2 billion monthly active users, your customers are using Facebook. And it gives you a way to put an ad directly in front of them. Now. Those of you who have tried it will probably be able to relate to a bunch of things on this slide, which is Facebook advertising is really easy to do and spend money, but very, very difficult to do well. There's a lot of different things that you can that Facebook lets you do. It also makes it very difficult, and that's where Ad Sciences comes in. So Appenite was traditionally a consulting company, a product development company. We build apps and websites for our customers, and when we were done building them, they said hey, can you help us launch the product now? And we said, sure. And we ran hundreds and hundreds of Facebook ad campaigns for them. And one of the partners of our firm is a very accomplished mathematician from Stanford Research. And he said, hey, I think we could do this better. So we developed some algorithms and methodologies that sit above what Facebook lets you do so that it isn't a frustrating experience and you can run very effective ad campaigns. In fact, in most cases, two to 10 times more effective at the same ad spend. So what's Ad Sciences? It's a solution that increases your ad effectiveness by two to 10 times. Uh, it's made possible by our methodology, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. Um, basically, we are increasing the size of your ad matrix, and I'll get into that in a second. And that's made possible by the tools that we offer. It's possible, but you're going to live in Excel hell if you do that with the tools that Facebook gives you. Uh, and it's currently delivered via a managed service as well as a SaaS platform to ad agencies. And eventually, we're going to be rolling it out to any end customer. So ad matrices, and I'm going to jump into a demo in a second. The ad matrices, your ad matrix is the size of your audiences, you know, the target audience, who gets to see your ad, and the number of pieces of creative that you have. So most marketers run campaigns that are three by three, three by four, four by four. So they have an ad matrix of about 16 cells. The problem with that is that when you take a look at a matrix of 16 cells, how do you identify which combination of ads and audiences are working? So what we do is we actually subdivide part of our methodologies that we subdivide those audiences and we give you a matrix size of thousands, hundreds or thousands of cells typically no less than 500. So now you can actually take a look at it and say, wow, this combination is really working, this one is not, and let's turn off the ones that are not working and apply the budget to the ones that are. So let's jump into a quick demo. You log into the system, it shows you the dashboard. You can see that as we started optimizing, which was around this date here, um, the number of conversions over time started to go way up. The cost per conversions started to go way down from, uh, let's see, from almost $25 to $30 to $5. By the way, the goal for this customer was a under $10 conversion. It was considered a wild success. Um, the click-through rates, they shot up initially, but then they went down a little bit and the cost per click actually started going up. Now, a lot of you who have run campaigns would think, why is that good? The cost per click is better when it's lower. It is, but if you're paying more for the right customers who actually convert, then it's actually worth more to pay for them. 
um, how, how do we decide what's good and how to optimize? There's, um, for the statisticians in the room, there is something called a Likert scale, which basically says uh, what are your preferences and what's important. And you can actually change these over time. So how do you actually want to optimize? Do you want to optimize for clicks at the beginning and eventually switch to optimizing over, uh, based on conversions? Um, so this is, this is kind of the meat of the tool where you can actually see, uh, for those of you in the back, I apologize, it probably looks like an eye chart test. Um, but it's basically showing, there are two ways of looking at the campaigns. You can look at them by the audiences or by the ads. So this is based on the ads. You can very quickly point out, you can very quickly identify that there is an overall score. This is the best ad set right here. And this, by the way, is out of 27 ad sets or audiences. You can very quickly identify within the best ad set what are the ads, what's the conversion rates. Um, everything is based on a score that we calculate based on that Likert scale. You can get a preview of the ads. You can then look at it based on ads. So this is all the ads across all of the campaigns. You can identify that the best ad is this free bonus ad where they're giving away $10. Um, by the way, this campaign was done for, oops, this campaign was done for GamerFan, which was actually a Boston New Tech presenter a while back. No, um, no they didn't. They didn't present? No, I thought they, they did. MobileNet built their mobile app. There you go. So MobileNet built their mobile app. Um, excellent. Thank you, Chris, for clarifying. Um, they've given us permission to show the data, by the way. You can very quickly identify which ads are performing the best in which of the ad, in which of the audiences or ad sets, and one of the one of the most effective pieces of these campaigns, or the most difficult thing to do, is is the budget rebalancer. Okay, so once you've turned off a bunch of ads in a matrix, how do you figure out how to reapply the budget elsewhere? This tool does it automatically for you, and those of you who have run big big Facebook ad campaigns. Uh, I can see a few of you shaking your head yes, because this is a pain to do in Facebook. There is no easy way to do it. And it's literally just a matter of, if you want to keep your budget the same, that's fine. But the system will decide, based on the ads that are currently active, where, you're, where you should apply your budget to get the best impact. And not only that, but because a lot of the, a lot of the items are automated in the system, you can very easily track what you did for the client or for your own campaign. Uh, you can see in this particular campaign in a period of a, a month, we did 2,400 actions on the campaign, uh, which would be impossible to do without a tool like this. So, that's it. what are the fees, and the second part was how can we ensure that the data that's given to us is not shared with anybody else. So we have two different pricing models. We have a managed service pricing model and then a performance-based model. Um, we have a minimum of a three-month campaign because running the marketing campaign is about repetition and getting clicks and conversions, no matter what the business is. A three-month campaign, including the ad spend on Facebook, which get paid directly to Facebook, ranges from $9,000 to $20,000. Um, that's comprised of three components. There's a setup fee, there's a managed service fee for the optimization, and there's the Facebook advertising fee. Um, the second part of the question was how do we ensure that the data remains, um, it doesn't get shared, essentially, a privacy question. So we don't actually ever control any of that data. The, we work directly for clients as well as with agencies that work for clients. The data is all kept within Facebook and within our system, and it's the results of the ads. There's no personal data that gets pushed back and forth, so it, it hasn't been an issue with the few dozen customers that we have so far. Do you envision any risks uh, with Facebook itself updating features in their current ad managers? So 
the question was, do we envision any risk with Facebook updating features or changing features or removing them in Ads Manager? Or I, I'm going to extend the question to Power Editor as well. So yes, and that's actually one of the reasons we have this service, because Facebook changes Ads Manager and Power Editor all the time. And they don't tell people, and they roll it out in different phases. And I could be on the phone with a customer saying, click on this in Facebook, and they're seeing something completely different, even though we're both on, supposed to be on the same page. So this has actually helped solve that problem, because it is one step removed from that user interface. It is a problem for us, but Facebook does keep people who have ad accounts very well informed of when the APIs are changing, so that we can stay one step ahead. So the question, if I can try to summarize the question, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was how do we not tire people out with the same marketing message, the same ads, and how do we know what the effectiveness is going to have when we turn, or what, what the effect is going to be when we turn ads on and off? So we do measure that. We measure everything. Uh, we're, we measure it based on split tests. In fact, we're, we're coming out with some new features. Let's see if I can get this to actually show on the screen. We're, we're coming out with some new features that actually shows you a cloud, a tab cloud, and a visual representation of all the ads about what's working and what's not working. Uh, also, a big part of watching your campaigns is watching the frequency and making sure that you're not getting too high. Um, I, I'm going to use this as a product feedback session as well, and I'm going to say that we're now going to have a new feature that's also going to give you a frequency of ads that are similar to each other, so we don't run into the problem you just described. So thank you. Last question. Yeah. Um, so if you're an early, early stage company, it sounds like that would be a bit expensive for you. Whereas if you're a very large company, it sounds like uh, you probably have a budget to maintain it. So somewhere in there, you probably have a part of the and have you thought about? Sure. So the, the question was about the size of the customer and whether or not they can afford it, who are tar target audiences. So we have two distinct target audiences, uh, target customers. One is, one are agencies. They already have a number of their own customers that they're doing this for, but they're not doing a good job because of the amount of work that's involved. And that's what part of the reason we built the platform. Um, there is a different pricing model for the agencies, obviously. Uh, the other half of that question was, what about our direct customers for whom we're providing this as a managed service? So honestly, right now, we have customers across almost every vertical. We have B2B customers, we have B2C customers, and customers that are almost every size. So we have, like Gamerfam is an example of an unfunded startup, well, I shouldn't say unfunded, friends and family round, seed round startup that use this to achieve their goal of getting more users on the platform so that they could actually get to their next round of funding. And they had no problem paying for it. Other companies that are on the smaller side, we're actually starting to roll out the performance-based model right now where there is still a setup fee involved, but we will take our management fee based on the performance of the campaigns and if we achieve the goals. And what kind of person do you envision uh, in a company who should be uh, equipped to use this? So the question was, who within a company is the right user of this? So it's the marketing person or the marketing agency that is within the startup. Um, because it's a managed service right now, the users, if you're a startup that wants this service, you're not actually using it hands-on to do the optimization. We're doing that for you. We are becoming a key part of your marketing team who structures the campaigns. We 
learn about your company's sales funnel and marketing funnel and how you're trying to drive people through them. We're using remarketing and achieving the goals of the campaign. One additional thing, um, and this is kind of a surprise to these guys, but I just got last minute uh, approval from the other two partners of the firm to offer uh, two different discounts um, if people sign up before the end of either August or before the end of the year, a $1,000 and a $500. If people want to take advantage of that, see me after this.